Today we're going to do two things. We are going to graph f prime on a graph of a function, and then we're also going to talk about um, important parts and then um, use the derivative to see how they're used. There are three things that you need to do. If you need to pause this to get this written down, go ahead. But there are three things that you need to look for. You need to find where the graph changes direction. That's an important part where the graph changes direction because this is where f prime crosses the x-axis. That's where, remember, f prime is the slope of the tangent line. And when it changes direction, if I look in this problem right here, when it changes direction, that when the that's when the slope of the tangent line is 0. Then you need to find where the graph is increasing and rising because that's where the slopes are positive and that's where f prime is above the x-axis. So if I look at problem number one, it's rising to the left, rising, remember you do this like you read a book, rising, 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 then I'm changing direction. And then I have to find where the graph is dropping because that's where f prime is below the axis. And so on the other side of changing direction, if I continue to follow that, notice the graph is dropping, that's where it's negative. So I'm going to take a different color pen to graph this just so it sort of stands out next to my original. What I do is I plot right where it changes direction, that's 0. And then on the other side, it's above. And over here, it's below. And you, this is just a, an approximate sketch of the f prime graph. So, you know, it could be steeper or less steep, and I don't really care about that, but this is the basic look of it. Sometimes people will find, you know, like go here and they'll approximate this slope here, and maybe this slope looks like it's about positive, I don't know, maybe positive 4, and so you'd put a point there at positive 4. Then go over here on the other side and approximate this slope here. And maybe right there it looks like it's negative 4, and so then they'll put a point at negative 4. And then you can see there's my actual um, a, a better, maybe, line of the graph. But you don't need to do that. You just have to figure out where it is um, changing direction, where it's rising, and where it's dropping. And so this red scribble here is my approximate f prime graph. So I'm going to go through that process again. I've got a change in direction in two spots, one there and one there. So those are where f prime crosses the x-axis. So I just put dots on the x-axis where that changes. And then it's increasing. So that means in that region before this dot, it's above the x-axis. And then it's decreasing. So in between, it's below, but it's got to connect into that dot again. And then after, it's increasing again. And so then that's going to rise up. So I have this sort of curve as my f prime graph. Just approximate. It's not, don't overthink it. Again, here's another one where, where I have changing directions. So it looks like about here and there it changes directions. If I follow this, this is dropping. That means it's going to be below the axis in that region. And it's increasing a little bit here. So it's going to be above the axis. It's going to connect and hit the other point. And then I'm decreasing again, so it's below the axis. And so my approximate f prime graph is just that little sort of almost parabola looking thing. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense, because this is a squared graph. And the derivative of a squared graph, like if I, or sorry, this is a cubed graph, I apologize. If my f of x is x cubed, then my f prime of x, but just by using the power rule, is 3x squared, which is a parabola. And that's why my prime graph looks like a parabola. Notice in this one, same thing. This was a cubed graph. My prime graph looks like a parabola. Just depends on if it's a positive or a negative. So if I have a a parabola, it's changing direction at 2, it's decreasing or dropping, so it's below the axis to the left of 2, and it's increasing to the right of 2. So it's above the axis to the right of 2. And again, if my function is x squared, then f prime of x is 2x, which is a line 
which should make sense why that looks like a line. All right, the important part on here that we're looking at is where it changes directions. And we call, we are going to be looking for something called relative extrema, relative extreme values. Relative extrema is where the graph changes direction. So it's a little like low point or high point in the graph. And what we said earlier is when it changes directions, that's when the slope of the tangent is zero. And so in order for us to find these points of changing direction, what we want to do is find when the slope is zero. The slope is the derivative. So to find the relative minima and maxima, relative mins and relative max, that's just plural for min and max, relative minima and relative maxima, which are my relative extrema, I need to find when the derivative is 0. And so I have to find all points of mins or maxes, and I do that by taking the derivative dy dx is negative 2x plus 2 and setting that equal to 0. So I will go ahead and solve for x, subtract 2. and So negative 2 is negative 2x, and divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, 1 is equal to x. So I have a change of direction at 1, when x is 1. I just need to figure out if it's a max or a min. Well, if it's a max, then I am increasing and then decreasing. That would be a max. If it's a min, I'm decreasing and then increasing. So that would be a min. Well, that means if it's a max, I have a positive slope and then negative slopes. If it's a min, I have negative slopes and then positive slopes. And so I'm going to figure out what they are in an f prime chart. I'm going to surround 1. Because I'm checking the derivative, when I make my f prime chart, I'm going to be checking f prime. So what I want to do is I want to do little test points. I'll go to the left, just to the left of 1, just to the left of 1, maybe 0. What kind of value do I get when I plug in 0? Because this is my derivative, this is my derivative, this is the slope. What kind of value do I get when I plug 0 in? I get negative 2 times 0 plus 2. That's a positive value. That means all the slopes to the right must be positive. That means up until here, the graph is increasing. Then I'll plug in something in the derivative just to the right of 1, 2 maybe. You don't have to go crazy. I could go, I mean, as far right as I want as long as it's bigger than 1. So if I put in 2, I get negative 2 times 2 plus 2. I don't really care what the value is. I just care if it comes out positive or negative. We've done that before where we just care if it's positive or negative. This is going to be negative 4 plus 2. I don't care that it's actually negative 2. I just care that it's a negative value. That means it's decreasing there. So I say I have a max at x equals 1. Because it asks me to find all points, I need to find the y value that goes with that. So that would be the point that is 1 comma what? How do I get that value? Well, that goes way back up to the original. I want to find y when x is 1. And so I plug that in there, negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1. I do the math. That's negative 1 plus 2 minus 1. Uh, negative 1 plus 2 minus 1, that looks like it's 0. So my y value is 0. That means there is a max on this graph at the point 1, 0. Okay? So again, it's your derivative. Set it equal to 0. And then do your test points to see if it's a max or a min in an f prime chart. And then find the y counterpart in the original that goes with that x value. So that's the point. So it's a max at and when x is 1, and that is specifically at the point 1, 0. So we're going to do the same thing with our next one. dy dx, find my derivative. It looks like I'm going to have to do a quotient rule. So I do the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. People get freaked out by this, um, get a little bothered, but don't. Um, I'm going to set this equal to 0 because I want to find when that equals 0. 
So I have 3x plus 6 times 2x minus, I'll just write that as 3x squared. That's pretty easy to do over this, oops, that was supposed to be squared, 3x plus 6 quantity squared. I need to get rid of that, so I'm going to multiply the 3x plus 6 quantity squared out. I do that on both sides, 3x plus 6 quantity squared, gone and gone. So I, and then times 0, it's 0, so 0 equals 3x plus 6 times 2x minus 3x squared. I will go ahead and distribute that through. I get 6x squared plus 12x minus 3x squared, or I get 3x squared plus 12x when I do the cleanup. So I am going to set this equal to 0 and solve. I have to factor to solve because I've got a squared in there. I will pull out a 3x. That leaves me with x plus 4. And so I set both of those equal to 0. 3x equals 0 when x is 0. And x plus 4 equals 0 when x is negative 4. That must mean in this graph I have a min and a max, or potentially, because I have two places here. So I'll do my f prime chart, f prime. I go further on the left is negative 4, and then 0. And now I'm going to have to do several test points again. I will do those in the derivative, and I just have to figure out whether it comes out positive or negative. I could do it in this one here, but I scribbled all over that, so I'm going to do that in this one. So if I plug something to the left of negative 4, like maybe negative 5, I'm going to end up here with a negative value, because it would be negative 15 plus 6. So I have a negative value, I'm just going to jot that down, times um, another negative value. And uh, I actually might have to be a little bit better about this because I do have to do some simplifying all over the place. So I'm going to have to figure out, I'm going to have to do better math on that or, or figure it out um, nicer. What I could do actually is even go down here and use this guy in that simple form. So I'm going to use 3x times x plus 4 over the 3x plus 6 quantity squared. Okay, then I'll plug the negative 5. That's going to be easier for me. So I'm going to get a negative here, and then I'm going to get another negative here, and then on the bottom when I square it, no matter what it is, it's going to be positive. So a negative times a negative is positive, so this is a positive region. Then I'll plug in something between negative 4 and 0, like negative 1 or negative 3 or negative 2. It doesn't matter. When I plug that in, I'm going to go back into here and then figure that out again. I'm going to erase my work here, plug in, so I'll do negative 1. So I get a negative times a positive, because negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. And then on the bottom, and again, that's going to remain positive. So I get a negative times a positive divided by, so that's a negative region. That means my graph is increasing and then decreasing. Then I'll check on the other side of 0, like maybe 1 I'll plug in. So I'll plug in 1. It's going to stay positive on the bottom. I know that. It's going to be positive on the top, positive in the other spot. Positive times a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So then I know it's increasing. That makes negative 4 a max and 0 a min. And so now I have to go back up to this top. I have a max at negative 4 comma. What do I get when I plug negative 4 in there? So I get 16 over negative 12 plus 6. So that's 16 over negative 6. Just doing math, 16 over negative 6. Reduce that down. It looks like negative 8 thirds. And I have a min at 0, and I'll plug 0 in here as well. Well, 0 in here is going to be 0 over 6, which is 0. And so I have a max at negative 4, negative 8 thirds, and a min at 0, 0. So again, it's your derivative. Set it equal to 0. Do your first derivative. Set it equal to 0. Test your point. Put it in your prime chart to see if it's a max or a min, and then find the actual point. So we'll go ahead and do this next one. dy dx is 3x squared plus 28x plus 60. 
I'm going to go ahead and factor that if I can. So I'll see, maybe I'll do my snowflake method here and factor that. I've got 180 and 28. Um, and 3x and 3x. And so I want to find two numbers that multiply to be 180 and add to be 28. So when I do 180, that's 1 times 180 or 2 times 90. I'm just figuring out all the ways that I can get that. That's 3 times 60, um, 4 times 45, and nothing's getting me 28 yet. Um, 5 times... Um, what would that be? 5 times 36, I believe. 36, 150. Yep, that works. Um, is that 28? Nope. So 6. 6 times um, 30. That one doesn't work. 7's not going to go in there. Does 8 go in there evenly? I don't think so. Uh, 9. 9 times 20. That one doesn't work. Um, oh, 10 times 18. I should have seen that right away. 10 and 18. So I cancel that or reduce that, I get x and 6. So this one factors down to 3x plus 10 times x plus 6. So my x's are negative 10 thirds when I solve, and x is negative 6. So I'll do my f prime chart at those two points. I have to figure out which one's where. Negative 6 is further to the left, and negative 10 thirds. And this is the place that I'm going to put them in when I do my test points. So maybe I'll do something like negative 10. Again, it doesn't matter just so long as it's to the left. So I'll put in negative 10. That would be a negative value and times another negative value. And so that's a positive region. So it's increasing up to there. Then I'll put something in between negative 6 and negative 10 thirds, maybe negative 5. So when I put in negative 5, I get a negative value times a positive value. So that's a negative region. So it's decreasing there. And then I'll try another one in here, something to the right. I can use 0. 0 works well. And I get a positive times a positive. So that's another positive region. So it's increasing there. That means I have a max at negative 6 and a min at negative 10 thirds. So now I just have to find the point. There is a max at negative 6, comma. What do I get when I plug negative 6 in here? And you'll just have to do the math on that. And I'll do a min at negative 10 thirds, comma. What do I get when I plug negative 10 thirds in into this original? And you'll have to do the math on that. I'm going to pause the video and do that math, and then we'll come back and take a look and see how we did. This is what I got. Um, I didn't double check my math, but um, I think this one's like right around negative 5-ish. Uh, double check and see. If uh, you have an argument, you can yell at me in class tomorrow or whatever. So, um, But that's, that's it for that. We're going to do um, our last example where we have a fourth power polynomial. Same thing. I start the same way. Derivative equals 0. So I take my first derivative, negative 4x cubed plus 8x. Set it equal to 0. I can factor out a negative 4x. That leaves me with... Um, x squared minus 2, I believe. And so I am going to set each of these things equal to 0. I get um, negative 4x equals 0. When x is 0, that part's easy. x squared minus 2 equals 0. When x is plus or minus the square root of 2, be careful of that. A lot of people forget the plus and minus part, and then you're going to lose part of your um, your information. Well, because I got three different answers, that means on my f prime chart, I have three values. The furthest to the left is negative square root of 2, then 0, then positive square root of 2. Now, I might not know exactly what these are. So I'm going to have to do a little approximating to do it. Um, you could plug it in your calculator, figure out about where it is. But I do know that this is more than negative 1, but less than negative 2. So a safe number to use over here would be negative 2. And a safe number to use in between would be negative 1. 
and then positive 1 and positive 2. And so those are the ones that I'm going to be using. So I will do negative 2. And again, I plug it in here. Plug in negative 2. That's going to make negative 4 times negative 2. That's a positive first value. And then negative 2 squared is positive. Um, actually, positive 4. Positive 4 minus 2 gives me another positive value. So this is a positive region. That means it's increasing up to that point. And then I'll plug in somewhere, or negative 1, do that again here. That's a positive region. And then 1 minus 2 is negative, so that's going to be negative. That means it's decreasing. I'll plug in positive 1. So positive 1, that gives me a negative. And a negative, that's an increasing. And then lastly, I will plug in positive 2. And positive 2 gives me a negative times a positive, which is a negative region, so that's decreasing. And a lot of people say, well, can't I just tell right away when I do the first one, is it if positive, negative, positive, negative? It's not always going to switch signs. There are instances where I'd get positive, positive. That would mean it increases and then, you know, kind of shifts and increases. Again, there is a twist in the graph. But for what we're working with now, you're going to see a lot of sign changes in it. But don't be surprised. It's not unheard of to get positive, positive, negative, negative. Um, they won't always go positive, negative, positive, negative. But again, now that I've got here, I know that I have a max in those two spots and then a min at 0. So I have a max at negative square root of 2 comma something and positive square root of 2 comma something. And I have a min at 0 comma something. I'm going to go back up to the beginning and plug it in here to find those values. And so 0 plugging in is really easy. That's negative 3. That math was super easy. But then I am going to plug in the negative square root of 2 um, in here. So that's going to, going to be um, negative 4 plus, um, that would be 8. So that's 4 minus 3, so it looks like that's 1. Turns out this one's going to be the same thing. I'm just plugging it in here and doing the math. You can double check my work if you need to. Um, but then I have my final answer for my max and my min. Didn't bubble the last one. So first derivative, set it equal to 0. Check your prime chart to figure if it's a max or a min, and then find the missing point. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me. Otherwise, I will talk to you in class tomorrow.